Throughout the long history of Robert Morris football, there is one man who's been there longer than anyone. That man is head equipment manager Ray Butter. Uh, I started here July 1997. Uh, I was actually friends with the guy who was the equipment manager here before me. Uh, he was he got hired by the Steelers. Somebody said, "Oh, you got to get Ray your job," and I was just working on campus part time. And I said, "It's full time. I can go back to school, get my degree." And 21 years later, I'm still here. Butter does all the little things that keep the team running. The generic version is um, responsible for all the purchasing, issuing, um, retrieval, and laundry and, and repair of all the athletic equipment. The helmet breaks, my shoulder pads, break a shoestring, something goes wrong with the coach's headsets, um, just any kind of equipment stuff that could go wrong during the game, that's what we're watching for. Uh, I mean, a lot's changed, I mean, as far as simple things like just uh, helmets evolving to where they are now from what we had. We used to have air-filled helmets that that was basically the protection. Um, now they're all, you know, a lot more sophisticated. Um, equipment, shoulder pads, everybody wants to be smaller and sleeker. When I first started here, everybody wanted the biggest shoulder pads, you know. I always laugh when we go down the hall because you'll see the guys from like 97, 98 and they, the safeties are as big as linemen with their shoulder pads. The team's five straight NEC titles from 1996 to 2000 was something Butter said was truly special. Yeah, uh, it, it was interesting. I mean, the, the, the team just had a swagger about them. Like, like, they they knew they were good and and you know we always played tough you know we never disrespected any opponent thinking that we couldn't be beat but they just yeah they knew it you know it was uh, you know it was a little bit different back then because um, I mean like I said it was we were non scholarship so we were getting a lot of guys that came in that came in with a chip in our shoulder that they thought they should have been somewhere with a scholarship so they were out to prove something. Um, you know, and, and the coaches, you know, used that at their advantage. And I mean, we had some really talented athletes. Butter was able to share all of these moments with his greatest mentor, head coach Joe Walton. Um, when I first started, I was scared to death of Coach Walton. Um, and by the time he left campus, I consider him a very close friend of mine. Coach was, uh, he was a great mentor for me. Um, he taught me a lot just not even just about the job but about life um, one of the, you know, one of the things is like you know, like I can sit there and listen to coach do game day speeches um, post game speeches I mean he, he had a great way of just speaking to you um, whether you were in the locker room or you're sitting there eating a sandwich with him at lunch um, he just he, he taught you stuff off the field that you didn't realize you were learning until a year later and you go, oh man, I remember we talked about that, you know. Throughout his time at Robert Morris, Butter said his greatest memory was when the team earned its first playoff berth back in 2010. But the year we played up at uh, North Dakota State in 2010 for the playoffs um, was a really cool, Just a, it was just a great moment in, in my career because like we've never flown anywhere. That was the first time we've ever flown as a team somewhere. So we had to deal with all the logistical issues of that. Um, and we had to do it in four days um, because we didn't even know who we were playing until Selection Sunday the week before. We were in that game up until the fourth quarter. And then, you know, once, you know, after the game, just being in the locker room, like, like I, I was even emotional after I lost. And, and usually that's never happened to me, you know, in a Rob Morris game. but. Um, you know, just to see, you know, the guys that were so depressed after, you know, and upset about losing that game and actually having the chance, so it kind of took over a little bit me too, but yeah, that's probably one of my uh, fondest moments there too, so. Another great touch was the team's win over Dayton this year for the first time in 17 years. It, like, it was, it, it felt great, um, and to see, I mean, Dayton's always been a thorn in our side, I mean, I, and I remember the day we beat them last in 2000. Um, you know, I, I can remember the play that we beat them on down there. Um, so for us to beat them again, it was great. Yeah, I mean, it was great for the team. It was great for the coaching staff. Um, you know, and inside, I just had a little uh, final. You know, we got that 
thorn out of our side and we beat Dayton again. So it was, it was pretty exciting. You ask the man who's seen it all. This is the year the Colonials once again claim conference glory. Uh, if you ask me, it, it's going to be this year. I mean, there's a swagger about the team right now that, you know, has been missing the last couple of years. You can just tell the guys, um, you know, going back to something Coach Walton used to always say, you know, the, the team starts in the locker room. And, you know, this team is, there's not offense, there's not defense. There's, there's a team in that locker room this year. And, um, that's a huge thing, you know, I mean, just seeing them progress through camp and stuff like that. So, I mean, everybody on this team has got everybody's back, and it, 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 it's a good feeling. they just got a good vibe about them. I, I think we, uh, we have a, a good chance of winning the conference this year. The history of Robert Morris football has been a roller coaster. The only man that has been there through the good and the bad has been Ray Butter, who hopes this year will be another storied one in his career. This is Sam Anthony reporting for Colonial Sports Center.